So when Adam came in and interviewed with us, he told me this story that like still sticks with me to this day. And I want to dive into this because this is what honestly sold us on bringing you on board. He's sitting in there talking about, and he hands this chart to me, and I've never seen anything like it before in my life, and I'm not even going to pretend to know what it was. But he's like, yeah, we, we determined that uh, the number one driving success factor for a tractor supply was tractor grease sales within a county. And you start to think about that, and you go, well, of course, it's tractor supply. They're, they're dealing with people in the country that, you know, the tractors grease is going to be a, a huge determining factor as to whether the store is successful. But how many thousands of SKUs does tractor supply have? And, you know, it's millions. Yeah. Yeah. And it's actually so, uh, so <clears throat> we want to dive into that. I, uh, principal component. So, uh, anyone that's listening now, I'm telling you the two key things that you could just take away from this. Just throw away the rest. Just principal component, random forest. Uh, they changed my life. Uh, it's been a statistical tool in the bag since the old IBM models. Uh, Can you explain a little bit of what that means? Yeah. So principal component is it's it's trying to derive what is whatever you're trying to model for. So for most businesses, it's going to be sales, it's going to be profit, which we can get into pro profitability is a little bit different than sales. Uh, so top line, bottom line, keep those in separate bins. Uh, there's a lot of, some people are, they're incentivized by uh, what their bonus is modeled for. Uh, so for merchandisers, right, top line is going to be their core. They don't really care so much about bottom line. For most operators, uh, in my mind, as a finance, it, bottom line is always going to be the the model success, which, again, sorry, I'm bobbing and weaving over here. <laughs> uh, there's If you're in a growth stage, right, top line is always going to be kind of your focus, but back to principal component, that's where sometimes I, maybe I, I wander a little bit. Uh, principal component is going to give you the key levers that quite literally move the needle the most. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the beginning, actually what got me into finance was trying to understand uh, from merchandising was what, uh, what actually pushed sales the most or at least what were those principal drivers uh, to be able to start understanding categories that quite literally were the biggest theme. I uh, ran PCA and then I uh, did a uh, random forest, and lo and behold, you have these very tight clusters that sometimes uh, they call it data mining for a reason because for the most part, you're you're kind of digging in the blind, praying that uh, hoping you stumble across something. Yes, that there is for whatever reason that the millions of people that come into a store, in this case, Track Supply, uh, have a core theme. Uh, and in this case, yes, it was it was grease and equine buckets. Uh, we can actually get into the. Uh, the the secret sauce at Tractor Supply. Anyone out there wants to start up a <laughs> farm and fleet? We got it. Uh, but uh, yeah, these actually, and it, it really came down to four main SKUs, which made it even more unbelievable. Uh, and then, you know, I don't want to dive right into it, yeah. but that's what then led to, uh, and this is where anyone watching, uh, a small thing, a nugget, can turn into quite literally tens and tens of millions of dollars in capital expenditure. Uh, it started the Hadoop uh, cloud-based modeling at Tractor. At the time we were running this, it was uh, Natiza. And then, you know, we built the actual recommendation model. A whole CRM team was built overnight. Uh, completely new marketing division. Uh, I mean, it was wild. From, it's amazing. From that, from those few data points, they built this entire from one regression model, one nugget, and not even a nugget. I would call it a flake in the pan. 
right? Because you got to keep digging to find that vein. That was the flake in the pan that's like, yep, I'm going to spend the next three, five years, they're still digging to find that vein because this is the flake that's worth digging for. So if you if you bring that back to real estate, I mean, the the number of, of data points that we think about that I think a lot of us have a gut intuition uh, when it comes to, you know, hey, I'm buying this deal because it's in a great area. Well, what makes it great, right? A lot of us kind of have that intuition, but yeah. bringing it down to what Adam is saying is like, let's throw some science behind it. What is the zoning? What's the drive-by traffic? What's the daytime population? What is the, how many number of residential permits, you know, uh, renovation permits have been pulled within a one mile radius in the last year? It's data points like that, that if you can figure out why that project was successful, you can then replicate it time and time again, based on data and science and not just a gut feeling. I yeah. think that this will be good. Because I, I would think, especially with the kind of real estate that we're doing, residential permits, like renovation permits, uh, has to be a pretty big determining factor into the success of commercial real estate in some of these areas because we're going into emerging corridors, right? And residential always beats commercial to the punch. So well, we're obviously working on all of our different yeah. data points and the kinds of things that we're <laughs> going to be getting into. But now I'm starting to think about it. I'm like, man, maybe See, we need to look the, into how many residential renovation permits are being pulled in this specific area. And this is where we got to dig.